uh, it was really kind of fortuitous because these two very enterprising young students from the UW-Madison approached me um, about starting a comedy magazine that they were working on out of their dorm. It was a very easy decision for me to make. Uh, it was all the money I had in the world. I cashed out every bank account, all my savings, uh, and, and put it into this totally untested uh, you know, campus newspaper. It, it was probably not a very bright business decision, but because I was interested in comedy and I wanted to write comedy and had pursued comic strips for that reason, this was exactly what I wanted to do. It was like a whole newspaper that I could do whatever I wanted in. in. I could make up any story, you know, whatever, and it would actually get distributed and people would see it. So it was kind of a dream come true for somebody who wants to do comedy. When, when The Onion was first set up, it was a two-tiered company. There was the creative side and there was the business side. And it was me and my partner. I was the creative side, he was the business side. And he, the rule was he couldn't tell me what to do and I couldn't tell him what to do. So the best part of that was that he couldn't tell me what we could print. And so he might spend months you know, trying to sell a national ad to a cigarette company off for the back page. Meanwhile, I'm planning to you know, have some big cigarette bashing article on the front page that's going to debut the same week. Um, I liked that. Nobody made money. Everybody was you know, scraping by working at The Onion <clears throat> because every penny that we sold to local pizza or taco store advertisers was going to that printing <laughs> cost. The culture that we developed really early on from really day one of total editorial freedom has never changed. And so the writers just get to write whatever they want. They don't get censored by anybody on the ad staff or the business staff. They um, are their own arbiters of good taste and of material. I liken the onion to having a child because you start it and it's all full of promise but you don't know what it's going to be and then when it gets to a certain age you kind of have to let it go um, and let it be its own thing and step back and and now I sort of feel like it's gone off and it's it's gone to college and it has a job now and it sees me on weekends uh, but you know what I mean it's like it, there's very much a, a parallel there but a lot of things uh, I would let evolve and just see what would happen. Because you never know what's going to happen in terms of the zeitgeist or how humor tastes are going to change. Um, the type of humor that um, The Onion's primary audience likes now is different than what they liked 25 years ago. And that's sort of cool to see when that evolves, to see, because you get different writers in who, who are good at, that's sort of their voice, and then that connects with readers better. Um, and you just can't, you can't predict, and you wouldn't want to predict or plan for that, but it's really cool to see that sort of stuff change, just like the very subtle change in um, the tone of the onion and like what the voice is at any given time is really cool. And I uh, hope that continues, and I hope that you know, in the next 25 years, the onion will change to something that's kind of unrecognizable from now. Because right now, it's very different from what it was when it began. There was a period of the onion where we decided to take all the profits from The Onion and put it back into the company and start paying the employees more and giving them health insurance. And uh, we invested in um, making The Onion better. And so as an owner, I didn't get paid anymore. And I was homeless for a while. And I lived on friends' couches and um, slept in the studio where we recorded The Onion Radio News, showered at the Y down the street. And I think back on then and like, would I go back and tell myself then, um, dude, get an apartment? Uh, no, because I was so happy like doing what I was doing. I was just living my, I was in the zone. I was doing exactly what I thought I should be doing. And that was some of, the, some of my best work was done during those times. Um, so maybe I would, I would go back and say, um, you know, don't worry about the money. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, because a lot of times, especially in this culture, we're motivated by money. Well, I have to do this because I have to get a job because I have to pay for X, Y, and Z. You don't have to pay for X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter. You don't worry about money. Uh, just do what you love to do and just keep doing it. We never knew um, week to week, you know, if this was going to be our last issue. Yeah. And a lot of people sort of thought, well, if it is, let's go out in a blaze of glory. You know, let's do something awesome. It's, there's so much energy and... Um, 
it's like at the Onion whenever we would hire young writers and I would train them. Um, that's just like the lifeblood of comedy, you know, people with a new, fresh voice. And I feel like there's a lot of enthusiasm and energy on a college campus, you know, kids who uh, just are at the beginning of their professional lives, potentially, which is so exciting to just sort of get their ear for a second, you know, at that crucial time is pretty awesome. I'm Andrea Esselman. And I'm Sophia Kreiss with your weekly news update. Or from, from the staff and my fellow colleagues.